What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode here on the eAssist Dental MBA podcast, where we are spending time with some of the amazing people in our profession and talking about some of their experiences, the business side of dentistry, some of their challenges, how they overcame them. And in each episode, we've been fortunate because these amazing people have been sharing at least one nugget um, for all of you out there watching that you can run with and, and hopefully uh, do what you continue to do to make dentistry better. So I'm very excited to have with us today. Today, Dr. Warren Willis, who is in Idaho. How are you doing, Dr. Willis? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right. So I figure the best way to get into this as far as uh, you know, getting us started is have you share a little bit about your story. Um, you know, in dentistry, uh, you know, the amount of practices that you that you have and, and all that good stuff and kind of you know how you got to where you are right now. Sure. So uh, I graduated from Oregon Health Science University with uh, Dr. James Anderson, was one of my classmates, who's the CEO and owner of ESS Dental Solutions. Yeah. And uh, we went to school together, graduated in 2002. And since then, um, I've built uh, a number of practices, probably about a dozen practices. Um, I have a couple others under construction right now, but built a dozen practices. Some of those I originally built as kind of a, an entity for a dentist that wanted to practice and he was the full owner of it, but at least half of those I own myself and um, with various partners and and have learned a lot of things along the way of how to do it better and and uh, through experience. And and I think we have a pretty good system now how to, how to keep growing. So I'm always curious, uh, you know, there's a lot of things, as you know, in dentistry that typically stay the same and then certainly a lot of changing and, 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 and evolving. Uh, what are some of the things maybe in just the last five years that you have really seen have make a, you know, have made a big change in dentistry? Well, I think the one of the big changes that I see happening more is you have a lot of uh, growth with corporate dentistry. So there's a, lo a lot of um, infusion of, corporate dentistry, hiring dentists to work as employees versus the single practitioner that goes out there and tries to, you know, hang their hat and make it on their own. And so that's one of the things that I feel very strongly about being an advocate for is how to help the single owner general dentist, um, you know, survive and, and have the same benefits that maybe is making corporate dentistry grow so fast um, mm -hmm. so that they can be competitive and and increase the, you know, keep the market share uh, that way. It's interesting. I think that's a great segue to to the business part of, of what we're talking about today, as you know so well, right? When 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 a when a practice owner uh, understands either uh, a lot of aspects of the business part of the den uh, of the dental practice, or, or as, as we've been talking about on this podcast, you know, the ability to utilize resources like an eAssist, kind of the third party companies out there that are helping all of you with a lot of those systems and processes in the practice, so that you can feel like, wow, we've got these resources, and most importantly, you can do what you you do best and, and which is clinical dentistry. So I'm curious, right. you know, your perspective on that, you know, the, you know, how much have you jumped in to really understanding the business side of it and, and how much have you been able to, you know, rely on, on people around you? Yeah, I think um, the business side of it just happened by coincidence as I kept trying to do things and learn and grow. Um, when you go to dental school, you don't take really any business classes, you know, you just learn dentistry and then all of a sudden, one of your most important responsibilities is that of a business owner as soon as you buy a practice or as soon as you own a practice. And so it is very important to learn what resources you have that can help you run very efficiently, increase production, lower overhead. And eAssist is one of those ways that you can do that, obviously, by outsourcing your dental uh, billing so you don't have to hire more front office staff increase your overhead with employees and all the headaches that come with more and more employees that um, I'm sure anyone would be familiar with this that's had to manage employees. So it is, it is very important to learn how you can um, compete with, you know, corporate dentistry would take care of this all in house. You know, they would have a specialist that handles insurance, a specialist that has, handles all marketing. Well, that, those are all the hats you have to wear when you're the, the, the owner yourself. And so how do you take care of those? Yeah. So, 
I'm always curious because like you mentioned, uh, it, it really sounds like you have, you know, surrounded yourself, you know, like you said, with, with, with people that know those integral parts of the business side of dentistry. I would have to think it's, it's, there is a sense of pride as you've continued, like you said, to run your own practices and find ways to make that happen that you wake up one day and you're like, you know what, I'm not spending all the time on the business stuff because you got to, you know, take care of patients. But I would imagine you look back and you say, you know what, it's good to know a little bit of that and understand a little bit about that. And I, I would imagine as you kind of, you know, continue to go through your career and you embrace that, um, that it has helped you make better decisions as you've, you know, grown and scale your practices. For sure. Yeah. It's, it's kind of maybe the, the same principle that in dental school, you learn how to do your own lab work, although you never plan on doing it after you graduate. <laughs> yeah. You're not making your own crowns for everybody, right. but you appreciate what's necessary for a crown to be great and, and perfect in the mouth because you've, you've had to do it yourself. And I think it's the same way with, uh, you know, I know when I first started, I, I did all my own QuickBooks and accounting for my first dental practice. And of course I can't do that for all these. I've, I've obviously delegated that out, but I do understand the, you know, profit and loss statements, how to look at those and analyze what's off and what's not right and where we're spending too much or where we're not saving enough. And, um, and that's because you've, you've put experience and time into all those parts of the practice at one point. Yeah. All right. So if you're good with it, let, let's, let's talk some challenges. Uh, everybody has them, uh, you know, and so often, you know, you hear people say challenges are nothing more than opportunities, you know, opening the door for new things. Uh, are there two that come to your mind when you look back at your career, things you've had to overcome that you could share with everybody and then maybe talk a little bit about how you over, overcame them, uh, you know, and, and, and how it's made you stronger as, as, as a practice owner? Yeah, sure. I think uh, one of the challenges that every owner will experience is uh, staffing their practice, keeping their staff working efficiently and not just like they're there to clock in and clock out, to be motivated, to see the practice be successful. And because quite honestly, uh, your patients will spend more time with your staff than they will with you. You know, you'll be in the chair, their mouth will be occupied, but they're going to have a lot of conversations with your assistant your front office, and all that reflects on you or what they perceive about the practice. So um, making sure that you hire the right type of people and not be afraid to dismiss someone that perhaps is not, uh, that is, you know, bringing in uh, a bad, bad feeling about the practice or discontent and causing employee turmoil. That happens all the time. And sometimes I think, at least in my experience, Dentists are not, um, they, they try to make everyone happy and not ready to cut ties with, with some things that aren't working out. And so I had to learn that. I had to learn how to make sure that we put all the right pieces together as far as the staff goes so that we're extremely effective together as a group. And I, I really feel even though I have multiple practices, I have some of the best staff in all those practices that make my life easy. I, I can sleep easy at night. I don't have to, I can delegate things and it all gets done, but it's being really choosy about who works for you and training them. You can always, uh, the one thing you can't train is good personalities. Either have a great personality at first and you can help them get skills, but if they have a terrible personality, it's, it's a bad road ahead. So um, I think that's one of those things that I've learned. I think another thing was, um, I always thought I would just own one practice and work for 30 years. And that was, I was very happy and content to do that. Um, I think other opportunities came my way and they pro they basically moved me or, or to take risks. And I, I naturally wasn't a, 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 a good risk taker, but the more that I, that I started to take opportunities to open a second practice, bring in partners, uh, those were things that I learned from experience and, and they turned out to be fantastic um, the way that we did them. So. All right. So as it has been with the many challenges, uh, the practice owners like yourself in dentistry have had to overcome. Then last year happened uh, a pandemic, something that certainly in, in, in our generation, you know, we, we have not seen and, and haven't experienced. So we'd love to have you talk a little bit about that and, and, and what it was like last year 
for you, but I think more importantly, you know, w- what you learned from it and, 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 and some of the things that, you know, you're going to continue to, you know, hold on to, to, to make you stronger moving forward as we get out of this. Cause we will, right. Certainly it's, it's, it's changed all of us in a lot of ways, but we are going to get through it. And I know, you know there's been tons of lessons learned in dentistry. So curious, you know, what, what it's been like for you. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, one of the previous great lessons that I learned was during the recession years where we were, uh, or our economy nationally was suffering quite a bit, I was still able to build new practices and put those together and see them grow. And so I always used to say dentistry really is recession proof. But then when we saw COVID hit, I would say dentistry is not necessarily pandemic proof if we have to shut down, right? With government mandated shutdowns, that obviously took a toll on many, many dental practices. So one thing would be, I think I learned to always be prepared for the unexpected like that. You know, if hopefully that will never happen again, but you at least have to be prepared. And I think we've learned some things from this experience with it, that if we were to have another pandemic, we would adjust faster and be more prepared with just policies in the office, um, the things that we, um, you know, from technology that helps uh, with keeping offices sterile and purified air and all sorts of things that are now more on our minds because we've experienced it. So. Yeah, d- definitely been interesting, but I think like you said, it, it, that's been one of the great things about dentistry. It's been nice to witness everybody coming together, uh, practices, dental companies. I'm sure, you know, you've seen it all um, that have, you know, been there to help each other all in in the spirit of helping the patient, right? Figuring out ways to make sure that these patients are taken care of, uh, which is which is always priority number one. All right. So when we do get back to, hopefully it's very soon, uh, maybe we can all yeah. get to a meeting and get in person again and, and, and <laughs> you know, spend time with our colleagues. Um, my last question is, is that if, you know, if you were given the opportunity to get on stage at a dental meeting and do a presentation in front of all of your colleagues. Um, and you were asked to share, you know, one bit of advice for them with what you've learned and what your career has been like, what, what would you share with them? Well, I think the best thing that I've learned in my career that would probably be a, a, a nugget of advice is how to do a couple of these, these three things. Maybe one is how to increase production in your practice in the ways that you may not never have thought of. Um, Uh, lower your overhead, where could you save costs? So that would, by doing both of those, you'll increase your profits. If anyone is a great dentist, but you're not making any money doing dentistry, you're not going to enjoy it. You need to, and you need to make money to enable to enjoy it. And so, and the, the, the third would be is how does dentistry create residual income? It can, there, there's great ways to, to create residual income. I've talked to some and I still uh, receive emails about how do you create a second entity within your own practice, which is, you know, it looks like one practice to the general public, but it's really a separate doctor's practice within your practice that pays you a residual income for being there. And then you can sell practice A uh, when you're ready to retire and practice B keeps paying you money and definitely into retirement. So there's things like that, um, uh, just ways that increase revenue by by developing skills. And, and um, I think implant dentistry has been one of the greatest things I've uh, enjoyed and have added to all my practices. And I would hope uh, others that haven't tried that yet would be brave enough to take a risk and try uh, including implant dentistry in their practice. So those are a few gold nuggets that I, I would definitely share if I were uh, able to assist people on a one-on-one basis. So every once in a while, when you're on a podcast talking about business, you have a practice owner come on and give three tips that really show that he understands the business side of what he's doing. I love that productivity. Like you said, you know, looking at your expenses, I mean, all those things that, you know, it sounds like over the years, you've been able to build up that confidence, you know, which is really exciting. So uh, I know the ESS team is super thankful um, that you took a couple minutes to come on, um, share your insight, share a little bit about your story, um, all in an effort to, to make the profession better. So Dr. Willis, thank you so much. We appreciate your time and best of luck. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. (laughs) Have a good day. You too.